Welcome back to part two of building modern line of business applications with Visual Studio 2010. My name is Orville McDonald. I'm a product manager with Visual Studio. And in part one, what we did is we actually went, we grabbed a simple data grid, we've added paging, and we really started to build the basics of our line of business application. The first thing that we want to do is we have a list of customers and we want to actually extend our customer detail information to include orders and display that on a different page. So what I want to do now is actually want to move over to our northwindservice.metadata.vb file. And you'll notice that I actually have this property called orders, right? And this is that um, additional order information that sits outside of my customer details. So I'm going to add some additional information. So in this case, I'm going to add and include. And what this include will be used for that we'll soon see. Well, let me save that. Go to my Northwind service. So I have my get customers. What I want to do is I actually want to extend get customers in order to pull in uh, details that will have our order information with it. So in this case, let me go to my toolbox. I've just now added uh, get customer details with orders. The one thing I would like everyone to notice is that if you take a look at my get customers query right here, and you take a look at my get customer details with orders query, it's very similar with the key difference being this include orders that I've added to the end. So you can see how the change that I just made in the metadata file and in the Northwind service actually goes through. Now with this update, and actually uh, let me build this to make sure everything is in sync. So with my build complete, let me go through and add an actual new Silverlight page. I got this. I can see I have a template called uh, Silverlight page. And this one I'm going to call customer detail. So we'll go through it. It's actually generating a new Silverlight page, kind of what like what we were doing before where we were playing with it. We can see I have a designer. I'm going to go to my data sources. In my data sources, uh, previously where I used a data grid, now I'll use details. And also previously before I was using get customer queries, this time I'm going to do it with the orders as well. So all I need to do is drag and drop this onto my designer. We can see that now it's actually uh, starting to show up. I could do some uh, sizing. If I grab. Actually, let me do it this way. So I could align it to the side. With my customer orders included, there's a few things I want to do. You'll notice that within my data sources, I actually have this orders. And I would actually like to include the order information as well. So I'll just drag and drop that one as well. You can see it coming in. Let me uh, properly align it. And I'll drag it down a bit. So we can see within my designer now, I've included not just my customer details, but I've added my order information as well. So these are all things I was able to add just by kind of like drag and dropping it onto my designer. However, there's a few more changes that I want to make to make this really kind of work for me. So the first thing I want to do is right up here, I have this uh, customer ID. And I don't really like the name of that. I actually want to change that. So let's go through and uh, update that. So for the content, it says customer ID something more descriptive. So let's say uh, details for customer. So let's spread that over there. And then in this case, I also have this uh, customer ID text box. And for this one, I want this to be actually auto-generated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to no longer enable it. So now it's disabled. The other thing I want to do is I want to remove uh, this button that I have for loading. I'll just go and delete that. And then the final thing I want to do is that for my uh, real controls, I actually want it to auto load. And in this case, what I'll do is I'll actually just go straight into the XAML for it. So as I scroll up, there it is. So in my auto load, and I want to set that to true.
and I also only need one real control, so I'm actually going to delete that one there. Let me save that. Let me look back again at my designer. So I have my UI, and kind of with my UI, there's actually a few things I'm going to want to do. So the first thing I need to do is actually update my code behind. So I'll right click on that. You can see view code. It brings up my uh, C sharp file for me, or actually, my apologies, I'm used to running a lot of C sharp code. In this case, what I'm actually doing is I'm bringing up a BB file. We'll see that I have a on navigate to, so I need to wire that up. Go into my toolbox. And I have my correct code. Yes, that looks like the correct post in it. Uh, the next thing I need to do is within my home page, if I go back to that one, we could see that I have my uh, customer list. The thing I want to do, though, is with my customer list, I want to change my company name. I want to make my company name a list of hyperlinks. And the reason why I want to do hyperlinks is I want to be able to click on a company name and have that in turn kind of redirect to where I'm going to go to. So there's a few things that I'll need to do with this one. So let me go into my XAML. And I'm going to look for the company name. Ah, uh, there we go. And I'm actually going to go and change this. If I grab my code snippets. We can see that I've now changed that to be a hyperlink button. And you can see that the path then leads to the company name. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to update the code behind on my home.xaml as well. Click my events. Ah, there we go. So I'm going to right click, navigate to event handler. You can see that I have my placeholder, add my code. We can now see that I have the correct navigation code in there. And what this enables me to do is it actually enables me to leverage kind of the Silverlight navigation framework. So that way I'm able to easily scroll through uh, between pages. Uh, the last thing we need to do is to add a simple URL mapper. And what I want to do with this one is I actually want to add this to my main page.xaml. I can find that. See here that I have my uh, URI mapper, and in this case, I'm going to add one more. Now that I have my URI mapper there, that will in turn map kind of the customer details, pass in the ID, and have that going. I will go and click F5 to get our application up and running again. As we can see, we now have our application up and running. This is the exact same list of customers like we had before, included with the paging. The first thing you'll notice is that the company name has now been changed to show uh, the different uh, URLs for a customer. I'll click on our first one. It goes over to our customer details page. You'll notice that it's actually loaded the customer's details information, in addition to displaying all their order information. And we were able to do that pretty easily using kind of the Silverlock framework and getting all of that included. So I hope that you'll join us for our next section, which what we'll do is discuss how we update data and validate it using Visual Studio 2010 and Silverlight. Thank you.